Graph and network theory in social media. Graph and network theory are foundational to the design and function of social networks. These mathematical frameworks help model the relationships and interactions in a structured way, enabling various features and functionality within social platforms. The combination of graph and network theory in designing the backbone of social networks has significantly influenced the success and persuasiveness of social networking in today's digital society. So essentially what we're saying here is we're using graph and network theory in a way to map out social networks, networks that are made up of multiple components, specific platforms, specific users, specific businesses, and specific pages, a whole variety of elements, and making connections between them and pretty much analyzing when a post is made in a specific way on a specific platform on a specific page, how does that post grow? What's its reach look like? Okay, a lot of elements related to that. So essentially, it looks like a web, okay, this web with bigger circles being more influential parts of the social network, and then obviously how the data spreads throughout the network when being shared. All right, and, and in order to find success on social media, we need to analyze our pathways in order to get our media and our information or advertising or resources to spread throughout these social networks. What are the most effective means for maximizing our business? So we're gonna look at a variety of tools that can be influential on this in this specific video. So firstly, we'll start off with modeling the actual relationships. What are the connections on our actual graph and network theory in relation to social media? So individuals on the actual network are represented as nodes and their connections are called edges. That's the lines between them. All right, so graph theory helps map the complex web of relationships okay, from direct friendships to more distant connections, which is when we're bypassing a way through nodes, all right, and getting there and establishing those relationships there. So we're ultimately seeing how everyone is co uh, connected and they mightn't be directly connected. There could be one person who's then friends with one user, then they're friends with another user, and then that leads to a destination that we want to get to. So it's that whole idea as well of six degrees of separation. We're actually mapping it out, how different nodes are connected there. We need to understand this so we can uh, try to map out how data can be spread. Secondly, it's community detection. Algorithms can analyze the graph structure to identify clusters of nodes, which represents groups with shared interests or characteristics, enabling targeted content and advertisements. And look, a simple way to find these clusters is looking at groups on social media. And you might actually target those groups, those pages that are actually made by users within those social media platforms. Usually people join those groups or those pages because they have shared interests. So if we can find these shared interests and identify where these clusters are, and if that aligns with what we our business specifically does and what we're marketing, we can pay for advertising to target those groups in order to maximize our return and potentially get new customers. The third area then is content spread and influence modeling. Understanding how information spreads to the network, allowing for predictions about which users are most influential and who can be used for viral marketing campaigns. So here we're really looking at who are the influencers on social media platforms. Okay, if someone promotes our product, what will the reach be if I use them as a resource? And really a big part of how the work and advertising campaigns happen. A lot of people do target Instagram of users or people on YouTube who they know have great followings and might get them to advertise their products. We've even seen it with certain YouTubers advertising games that are coming out. Okay, and by them playing the game on their YouTube channel, it brings the attention to all their users to that game who will hopefully purchase it. So we are trying to see the metrics, okay, of those users who have big followings, or also as said before with community detection, those pages that have big followings and using them as an avenue to advertise our products and sell our products, okay, and bring attention to our business and services. We then have recommendation systems. By analyzing paths and connections within the graph, social networks suggest new friends, pages, groups, and contents that users may like. Okay, even just within YouTube videos, okay, if you look at the right-hand side of your page, you will see videos that are recommended for you. Based on the algorithm within YouTube, knowing what you like, but also uh, YouTube's advertisers uh, wanting to be promoted too. okay? Uh, that's the same with Google as well. Okay, where at the top it has its actual sponsors as the first return pages, okay, where it's actually targeting you. 
okay but with these recommendation systems there is data behind it okay it knows what the user likes it knows what the user is looking at okay that's what its algorithms are doing and it wants to cater towards the user so that the user is happy and has a good user experience and are getting the actual media that they want but also supporting its affiliates and its sponsors helping them get their messages out to the users who would actually be interested in their businesses and services as well so recommendation is extremely important important for connecting individuals with data they want, information they want, and businesses with these users who can supply that to them. The next area then is of network resilience and security. So graph theory helps in understanding where the network may be prone to failures or potential attacks by analyzing node connectivity and network topology. Okay, where there might be flaws, where there might be issues. Okay, by mapping things out, we can kind of see where there might be openings, where has there been issues in other platforms or in other systems, or if a user has been doing any suspicious activity with their account, who are they connected to? If their account was hacked, who would be the immediate users around them that may be affected too? So I kind of can see that in the mapping as well by seeing these connections, okay, between the nodes and edges, between users and vulnerabilities, potentially linked to specific user accounts. And then the final area is that of data mining and behavior analysis. The study of graphs can reveal patterns in user behavior, lead to insights that improve user experience and identify malicious or identify malicious activities. Essentially with data mining, we are looking at historical data that is usually stored in data warehouses. Okay, looking at that data and essentially trying to put the metrics to it. So we can see data, we can see how something spread, and we can see the values to it. What happens if we start changing some of those values? If we do a change with this historical data we have, and by changing historical data, it doesn't affect our current operational data, but when we start creating simulations with that data, we can start predicting future patterns. And when we can predict future patterns, we can start selecting course um, approaches okay, to our business that could lead to success which changes to our current business model based on the historical data we have and the patterns that it's creating will lead to the most success going to the future. And that's what we want. We want success in the future. We want growth. We want to maximize our business opportunities. So data mining and behavioral analysis and that analysis of patterns through modeling and simulation can help improve our current user experience for the people that are interacting with our platforms but hopefully in doing so, maximize our business, bring us new customers and allow our business to grow. So I hope this video is giving an understanding of the advantages of using graph and network theory within the aspects of social media. Okay, it is obviously required for modern online marketing. Social media is such a great platform for getting messages out there and connecting with clients. It is a tool that must be utilized for maximizing a business. And graph and network theory, through the uh, identification of nodes and edges and connecting users with pages and accumulating this data, we can allow our business to grow within these platforms and really establish a great user base or use the platforms to advertise for us and look where we can target our sponsorship and spending to maximize business in the modern marketplace through social network and allow our businesses to grow.